Jasmine, we're here. We're here. This is it, the big final test. Yeah, it is. So how are you feeling about everything today? A little nervous. Yeah. I saw the actor for today, and he's maybe twice the size of the other guy. <laughs> a little intimidating. Yeah. yeah, that's OK. That's OK. <laughs> you have passed your CHL. You've received it. So this is a really big deal. Congratulations. It is. It's exciting. So I'm Thank give you. you. A high five on that. I accept. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you've got your concealed carry license, the next step is continuing that training. That's what we're doing here today, is making you an even more responsible concealed carry holder. So yeah. with all that said, David and I will be up there cheering you on. I'll keep that in mind. Yes, we will be with you in spirit the whole way. So are you ready to do it? Ready as I'll ever be. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. All right. So for the first scenario, we have um, a bunch of static targets. So we've got your shoot, don't shoot scenarios. This room is just specifically to get her comfortable with the firearm, get her comfortable with her surroundings. So going through this whole process and learning just a ton of skills, I knew all of that was building up to this moment and coming into the sim house, but I felt very prepared with all of the training that I've been learning throughout this summer. They kind of all just came together and it clicked for me. She's shooting. She's getting it. In the room, two times. So the stationary targets is kind of like the warm up. So for me, it felt really good to kind of get some shots fired first and then kind of mentally and physically prepare myself. Ah, that's it. That is it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. She's definitely gotten a lot more confident with it. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's awesome. Watching up here from uh, from this vantage point, it was really cool to see how you could tell the confidence through her body language. So in the first scenario, we'll have uh, Jasmine sitting in a simulated living room where we can practice a couple of different things. And so we're going to have her being distracted, being in that living room, having someone um, enter the home and seeing what her natural reaction is going to be to that. Mary, a little land, little girl! Practice is what really made me feel prepared for today. Come here! I have a gun. Come on, Jazzy. Where are you at? Nice. Good job, Woo! Nice. Yes, oh my gosh, I wanted to cry. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I was amped for her. So it was pretty fulfilling on my end to oh, take nice. a step back afterwards oh, and just realize, oh, I, I know how to do this now and I can protect myself and walk away from that. One thing that stuck out to me was, was how vocal she was. To hear her actually call back to somebody, to an intruder like that, I think that's, that was really cool for me to see. Hello, Clarice! I'm not a yeller. I don't raise my voice often at all, but I felt the difference when I could vocalize, you know, let them know I'm armed and to give them that opportunity to get out and leave me alone. <laughs> Aren't you proud? I am, absolutely. <laughs> In our last scenario, we're going to work with Jasmine on uh, what to do or how to react um, to someone that's already in the home. Having a lifestyle that I do travel a lot, I drive a lot, I know there are times that I come home really late at night, and having a CHL, that's something that I can feel more confident and comfortable walking into my home. Let's roll. What are you doing, my house? Ah. Get up. Jasmine definitely surprised me today. She's a force to be reckoned with. But having that, that confidence that she'll be able to, to defend herself when I'm not there, uh, that means a lot. Nice. Oh. <laughs> there you go, Jazzy. Ooh, that was awesome. great. Did you see her? Like, she did everything right. That was awesome. Get out of my house. I'm on arm. Nice. Whoa. Wow. Nice. Good job, Jazz. Good job. <laughs> I feel a lot more confident in my abilities to shoot a gun and my accuracy and precision with it. I still have so much room to grow and so much to learn. There's an intruder in my home. But I was proud of my accomplishment at the end of the day. Oh my gosh, I am so proud of you. Thank you. You crushed that. Thank you. It was really amazing to watch. David and I were up there cheering you on and we really learned something along the way too. So give me a post game. How do you feel? Like, how'd it go? My biggest takeaway was learning how to quickly act because there is no time to react. Mm -hmm. Knowing where my gun is, as well as have a good line of sight and know where the intruder is and know when I need to eliminate the threat. I just heard you use the phrase, eliminate the threat. Yeah. <laughs> that is a big deal from the Jasmine I met this, yep. <laughs> earlier this summer. 
you were you were in a very very different place and so hearing you say you're willing to defend your life you're willing to eliminate the threat is a big deal it felt really good to kind of almost come full circle with everything that i've learned you did such an amazing job and i really can't wait to see where you take it from here yeah i'm excited Aaron and Maddie may have struck out on night one of their hog hunt, but they're back at it again to give it another shot with Texas Parks and Wildlife Department hunter education specialist, Randy Spradlin. In addition to hogs, tonight they'll also be on the lookout for nuisance animals and common rabies carriers, such as coyotes and raccoons. Now go ahead and load up. Okay. You got your mags? Yeah, we have, we do. We have three of them. Rock on. Pop it in, keep your actions open. Well, night two was a lot more confident because I knew what to expect going into this. Much more calm, definitely knew what we were getting into. We knew how to handle ourselves in the blind. We were quieter. So I think night two was definitely much more successful. We had our, our coyote collar and we had the, the noises ready. That's not us. Are you sure? Is that you, Randy? Did you turn it on? Okay. Yeah, that, that's us. And the coyotes were answering us back and they were getting closer. <laughs> and Maddie and I are really starting to think that we are we are hunters and we are gonna do this. And then next thing you know, we hear, you know, the, the gunshot. And Maddie says, you know, what was that? And Randy said, it's, it was a gunshot. You know exactly what we think it was. And a couple more gunshots later, and we realized that our, you know, our coyotes that we were chasing are gone. I did not realize that without having neighbors and uh, ranchers around the area that everyone's trying to do the same thing in this area and, and maintain the land. And so they had the same goal that we did. We just didn't get to be the ones to do it, so. You know, I got to a point when I was just like almost trigger happy and I just wanted to shoot at something and I wanted to pull the trigger. I thought that it would be so frustrating to, to come all the way out here and spend two days out here to not even pull the trigger if I came out here to hunt. Do you want to take it? If I can see it in my scope. Go ahead, get, get set up. Get your eyes and ears on. I, I'll keep my eye on it. I stood up, I had my eyes, I had my ears, I, you know, operated the firearm, and I was ready to pull the trigger, and I realized that I had actually done what I needed to do. And I don't know that I even really expected that, so it was, it was a really cool moment for myself. You ready? Aaron got 
mounted and ready and it was just a nerve wracking moment. But at the same time, it was, I was realizing how calm Aaron was and, um, and I, that made me calm. I kept coming back to what I learned from, from Natalie and from Judy and what Randy emphasized tonight, that you're taking a life and that, that's not something to take lightly. Is it still there? It looks like it, but it's like deeper in the grass, sort of. Well, let's see. I don't see a good shot. I don't see anything that I think would be worth shooting at. Well, ladies. Randy, <laughs> feels like we've been here before. <laughs> Good example on how environmental factors can affect the outcome of your hunt. Mm -hmm. Last night, Mother Nature kind of slapped us around a little bit. And tonight, the neighboring rancher decides that he wants to help us out and get <laughs> stuff before it gets over to us. <laughs> so. Neither one of them are, in our, are under our control, but we gave it a heck of a try. Yep, we sure did. Y'all would make them safe and we'll get the heck out of Dodge. All right, two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you too. How are you feeling? I'm really tired. I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't get anything, but I still definitely don't regret this at all. I kept thinking about kind of why I did this and I keep going back to the fact that I started with this whole experience because I wanted to learn how to hunt and we, we did that. I mean, we hunted tonight and we hunted last night and so that on that end, I don't feel like we did anything wrong. And we, you know, we saw that raccoon. We had a little bit of progress. At this point, I am fairly confident that I would at least be able to take the shot. Like when I was standing up, I wasn't scared. I was expecting to be like freaking out and my hands shaking. And I really wasn't, like I was kind of ready to pull the trigger once I had the clean, safe shot. Yeah, I totally felt your confidence. That was something when it, when we were gearing up for that, I was kind of feeling your energy and yeah. you were totally calm. And so that made me calm. Absolutely. I'm shocked I'm not as freaked out. I mean, we it's like three o'clock in the morning and we're in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. We're pretty brave now, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this might not seem like the best experience right now as we're standing here, but thank you so much for doing this with me. I think that I've learned a lot. I really hope you have. You know, I think this is something we can totally keep doing. Totally. Totally. I would love that. This definitely lit the fire in me where I want to try again. Good. It's frustrating that we didn't get anything, but I feel ready to try it again and get something next time. Maybe we'll bring the boys with us. Yeah. We don't need them, but we don't need them. <laughs> we love you. Thank, Thank you. All right, let's, let's go to go. bed. <laughs>
was pretty intimidating. I know that both Anna and I were pretty nervous coming into this. We wanted to give them the true, real experience of coming to a match. So we had them register, we had them attend a safety brief, and then of course the walkthroughs on every stage. I could definitely tell there was a lot of nerves coming into today. It can be an overwhelming experience, but uh, it's also pretty exhilarating. So I knew that we were gonna have to kind of get them get them over that first stage before they could really start to have fun. All right, All right. All right. it is your turn to walk through the stage. You can go ahead. This is when you get your mind right. Goodness. The first stage went really well. Uh, it got us into it. Um, it showed us that we completed it. We hit all the targets. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> After the, the first round, I was kind of like dazed, like, did I really just do that, you know? But um, I, as they went on, it was better. And then just getting used to all those dang moving targets. <laughs> Range is clear. Holy Toledo. <laughs> <laughs> that, you guys both did amazing, amazing. So this is the first time that we were on a squad. Uh, the squad is the people who are with you shooting the same stage at, with you at the same time that you're shooting it. They knew it was my first stage at my first competition. So after I completed it, they were just as excited for me as I was for myself. I remember I said at the end of the shoot, you know, I, I, I want to do that stage over. And someone said, that's how we all feel, but that's a good thing because it means that you want to keep shooting. Today, Julie was a cheerleader, she was a coach, super supportive, and as soon as we finished up a court, she was always right there to give us high fives. That was good. Now, now that you're moving it and you guys are both moving, you're both shooting, you're, you're really comfortable, now's when you really need to make sure you see yes. that accuracy, so you need to see every single shot. No misses on the next one, mm -hmm. okay. all right? Good. I think the girls did great. I, I, I feel like a little bit of a mother hen because I was watching like, oh, just please be safe, please be safe and have fun. And they did exactly that. These are really challenging stages. There are only eight of these matches in the country and they handled this awesomely. It's a lot of work, training, like working out or playing a sport. You just have to really commit to it and want it and that then you'll be able to improve. As they worked harder, they got better, and they became more confident. And that is what the shooting sports are all about. Good job. I do. Way to hustle. I probably wouldn't have asked anyone else to do this with me other than Anna. I didn't know exactly what I had signed myself up for, but I had a lot of fun, and I'm really glad that she, you know, thought of me to take with her on this whole journey. Straight forward. Got your plan down. Run fast. She's left. Gotcha. We didn't do half bad, considering that the people competing, this is their full-time job, and we were able to keep up, and that's all that matters. We did a great job. So it was over 20 years ago that I was doing this very thing, learning and loving this sport. And to be able to bring two new women into it and see that exhilaration after they had that first successful stage and knowing they're gonna wanna do it again, just that is the best feeling in the world. You know, coming into this, I thought I would like it, I didn't know I would like it this much. I think that I would want to do more competitions like this one today. Competitive shooting is definitely something I'll do again. I think I'm going to try to get, you know, my dad or my brother into this just because it'll be a fun family thing to do. And I think they actually would like it a lot. This is something that you can do too. Head to your local club, get and find a mentor, take a class, learn it, and you'll fall in love with it like we have. All right, let's get your stuff packed up here. All righty. Oh, wish I could do it again, you know? <laughs> now that Aaron, Jasmine, and Natalie have completed their final challenges this season, Julie and I sat down with them to talk about their love at first shot journey, what they learned along the way, and what the future holds in store for them as new members of the gun community. 
So it's been a big summer, guys. You started out in one very different place from where you are now. I mean, I was in a completely different place geographically, never yeah, mind like right. mentally. And so it was, it's been such a crazy summer and I'm so happy I did this. A little anticlimactic, I think. I mean, you didn't get a chance to really shoot anything, right? No, I did not pull a trigger the entire time that we were on our hunt. That's so realistic though. Yeah, I mean, it is. That's hunting. Hey, uh, no, bird yeah. season is about to open. So I'm going dove hunting in a few weeks if you want to come with me. There you go. I do. Now I'm like need to finish this. Good. Good for you. How about you, Jasmine? I want to know how the shoot house went. So terrifying. Okay. I had a ton of nerves yeah. before. Yeah. And then when I was actually in the moment, just everything started coming back. I felt very prepared in the moment, which felt awesome. Yeah. But it was it was intimidating. What a confidence yeah. booster though. I mean, to be able to go from that to like yeah. in the moment, I got this. Until you're in in that situation, you don't really know how you're gonna do or how you're gonna react. Oh, absolutely not. And knowing that you are able to take care of yourself is just an amazing feeling. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's a stark contrast to your experience. And of course, competition are two very separate things, uh -huh. but still a lot of nerves. Yeah. Competition shooting was so much fun. I didn't do the worst, which was nice after we got the results back. So that was a confidence boost. So Jazzy said when she was in the safe house that their, her kind of instincts took over. Do you feel like the one thing you didn't have to think about was how to handle the firearm? Not really, because especially in competitive shooting, I always had to think about my grip, my sights, um, you know, changing my mags. One mistake will completely DQ you. Hmm. And they that, don't have that's... any tolerance for unsafe activity. Which is so good. It's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. What I love is that when I first met you, we were on the range. You're like, yeah, okay, yeah, I got this. And you were so nonchalant about it. And now you'll understand the sport. And you all have transformed so much. And that's that's the really neat thing. I remember oh showing you with, with the first time with the 22, with the MMP 1522, you're like, oh my gosh, that's an AR. That's, and now it's like, now that I love shooting that gun. That's like my preferred gun I would love to see coming out. Yeah. So. Wow, it's that says really, a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we started on what I perceived to be the same journey, and then we all just kind of went completely different directions. So it's cool to sit back down and talk about it. Yeah, and there's still just so much that I don't even know. And like, going on your hunting experience, <laughs> I want to hear so much more about it. I think we should do this again, but we should all just switch spots. I think that's brilliant. Absolutely, it'd be quite entertaining. What would you choose? <laughs> I actually want to go hunting. I'd love to go really? hunting. Really? And I want to yeah. try the shoot house. All right. I think I'll I would do. Teacher. I would take you oh, hunting, man. but I still do not have any experience with hunting. I'm really good at sitting. <laughs> My perception of a hunter is so different now. It's not someone who takes their gun, goes out to the woods, shoots all the animals and comes back. It really is this, this form of conservation. And so I think if I could do the experience all over again, I would focus on that aspect of it just as much as I did with shooting. I mean, even seeing y'all's journeys was eye-opening to me. Mm -hmm. I came from a different background, and so shooting as a sport is something that I never even thought of. There is just so much going on in that entire world. Not once did I ever feel unwelcome anywhere or overly intimidated anywhere. Um, and I feel like I'm at the point where I can now become an ambassador on behalf of the sport also. It's, it's such a huge gift. Like having, having this experience and knowing how to handle yourself safely, it's been a real, not just gift to you guys, but to us and to everybody you love. Very mother hen moment. <laughs> <laughs> totally. That's how it feels. Yes, yes. You're just three beautiful ladies. And there are millions of gun owners out there from people who do all of the same things you do and so much, much more. This is the tip of the iceberg. And so I'm just, I'm so proud of you guys because you've taken it and you've gone further further than I ever thought you could. It's been such a, an experience watching you all grow. I'm really just grateful that you decided to come on this journey. Like it, it took a lot of guts to just step out and say, you know what, I'm gonna do this. So ladies, it is official. You have made it. Welcome to the gun community. Good to be here. <laughs> you made it. Yes, <laughs> you did, you did. <laughs>